Hello, this is Jana Paskova, a photojournalist based in New York City. This hasn't always been my home. I was born in the small, beautiful Eastern European country of Bulgaria, where I lived until the age of 12. I returned there for a few weeks each year to visit my grandparents and reconnect with my roots. This latest trip in October and November of 2014 coincided with the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Bulgaria's ascent to democracy since then has been quite a personal story as my grandfather is a survivor of a political prisoner camp in the 1950s. His imprisonment became one of the reasons my family was granted political asylum to the United States shortly after the wall fell. And so this is a tale that has both shaped my life and that I've become a symbol of. With the help of the Pulitzer Center, I aim to show the ways in which democracy has changed Bulgaria, while somehow leaving the daily struggles of its populace untouched, trapped in a post-communist time capsule. A fascinating part of my project was the ease with which I encountered reminders of the communist regime, which didn't entirely crumble the wall in 1989. It survives in people's minds, in political factions and visual remnants across the nation, like still standing Soviet monuments, nostalgic graffiti, decaying Soviet air factories. This dark political past has left tangible ghosts in the form of its remaining gulag like camps where political prisoners once wasted away. I visited one on the island of Belene, where my grandfather languished 60 years before. A part of the grounds still houses prisoners, some for petty theft, some for larger crimes. The section of the island dedicating to imprisoning political dissidents, now in crumbles, is a haunting reminder of the dangers an independent mind once posed in Eastern Europe. There's of course been progress. Bulgarians can now freely vote and protest without much threat to their freedom and groups supporting the rights of LGBT and long oppressed Roma communities have formed and risen. There's a hard limit to people's social and financial advancement, however, and that new oppressor is corruption. A recent study by a Sofia-based think tank found Bulgaria's corruption to be at its highest in 15 years across civil and political sectors. This combined with chronic political instability, economic stagnancy and high poverty rates is what creates a noticeable weariness, hopelessness, so standard in the passerby that it becomes routine, one that fits in sadly well against an otherwise startling backdrop of rotting architecture, joblessness, and vast population decline. While a few large cities still attract businesses and the young, in 2012, depopulation due to post-1989 immigration, low birth rates, and high death rates, pushed 172 towns and villages to the verge of extinction and completely erased 24 from Bulgaria's map. I explored one such village on the Serbian border. Of approximately 50 houses, only three were populated, totaling its inhabitants to six. There was much decay and abandonment on the way. The now defunct regional airport, a former tobacco factory, and what used to be a school. And these visions of severe industrial and structural decay are becoming increasingly common across the country. With each visit, I find myself witnessing more and more of my country's vanishing. Traveling through Bulgaria's empty streets and dejected hearts, instead of where I'd wish the country would be now, 25 years after the promise of democracy, was most difficult, as a Bulgarian who loves my country. But I don't believe its problems can be solved by turning away from them, hence this project. My hope for Bulgaria is in the future, in those who are willing to believe in and fight for its still nascent democracy.